In our last lesson, we talked about um, text structure and we looked specifically at cause and effect, how one event causes another event or causes a reaction to happen. Today, we're gonna to be talking about comparing and contrasting. Um, we can compare and contrast two different types of text, or we can compare and contrast within one text. And we're gonna be talking about both of those today. This is gonna to be pretty simple and it should be a review for you. This should not be the first time you've heard about compare and contrast. Um, we've even talked this year about having read a book and then watched the movie of the same book. What, how do we compare and contrast those two? And when I ask you to compare and contrast, that means we're looking at what is the same between the book and the movie, and then where are the differences between the book and the movie? When we're comparing, we're looking for the things that are the same. So um, in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, there were four children, um, Lucy, Edmund, Susan, and Peter, and the children were the same in both the movie and in the book. Let's look at, we can also just compare and contrast or compare two things. So we need to look at oranges and bananas, which if you look at the picture, they don't look very much alike. So we have to kind of scratch our heads and think, okay, how are these things the same? Well, we eat both of them. There's one. They're both fruits. There's two. And to eat them, you have to peel them, each of them. So that's three specific ways they are the same. When we contrast things, we're looking for the way that they're different. Um, so let's go back to the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. The same, they had the same four children. In the movie, there's an entire scene where Lucy almost gets killed because the ice, um, the ice float that they're on, it gets broken and she gets washed out to the river. That didn't happen in the book at all. So it's definitely part of where it is different. So this might be the easier of the two tasks today. Um, we told how oranges and bananas were the same. Now, how are they different? Well, oranges are orange and bananas are typically yellow. Oranges are round and bananas are long. Um, oranges have seeds that we don't eat Bananas don't have seeds, or they do have those tiny little seeds that we that we eat. I mean, they're teeny tiny. Don't even really think of them as seeds. So one of the ways that we show how things are alike and different in um, like a picture form would be here in a Venn diagram, or you might have heard this called a double bubble. A double bubble is a great way to organize your thoughts when you're comparing and contrasting because it uses one picture to show how things are alike and how they're different. And it's in the middle where the circles combine that you show how the objects are alike. Let me show you. Um, in this one, these can be circles. I'm not really sure why we got all fancy and um, decided to make octagons out of them, but it's the same. If they were circles, it would work the same. So in this circle here, we have all the things that are true of oranges. They have seeds, they're fruit, they're orange, we can eat it, they're round and we have to peel it. In this octagon, we have the, all things that are true about bananas. They're fruits, they're yellow, we can eat it, its shape is long, we have to peel it and it doesn't have seeds. Here in the middle, you'll notice that I said these things twice. It's because they're in both circles. If, if this is the lining of the orange circle, these are included. If this is the lining of the circle for the bananas, then these are included. They're included in both. That's why this is where we put the things that are true of both. And then on the outside, we have their differences, the things that are only true of that fruit or that object that we're comparing. That's a review, right? So, we can compare and contrast anything. You can, you, we can do books. I could compare and contrast, contrast um, holes and the Watsons go to Birmingham. It might be really tricky because they're not very much alike, but I can do it. 
I can find two people, any two people in the whole world, and I can find things the way that they're the same, and I can find things that show us how they're different. Any objects, any animals, any places, any movies, any songs, you can do it with any two things. Um, as long as you can find one thing that's the same and one thing that's different, you can compare and contrast things. So let's review. These are, this is the most important part. To compare means I'm looking for things that are similar or the same. To contrast, I'm looking for things that are different, okay? And we can organize those ideas using a double bubble or we can call that a Venn diagram. I wanna show you two very short little videos that are gonna help you understand compare and contrast a little bit more, okay? Tonight, two characters are up for possible eviction from The Story House, reality TV's only show filled with your favorite writers and characters. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of The Story House. I'm Sofia Romero. It's been an exciting week for our writers and characters, and tonight we have two much-loved folktale characters that face possible eviction from the house. There's Red Riding Hood, who only wanted to bring her grandma a basket full of treats. She's up against Gretel, who went into the woods with her brother Hansel and found a candy house. Let's see what they had to say when they learned they could be evicted. Hansel and I probably should have stayed away from that candy house, but times were tough and we were so hungry. I know I went into the woods alone, but I was just trying to bring treats to my grandma. It's not like I stuffed my face eating a candy house or anything. As always, let's bring in the professor to break down this matchup in a segment we call Compare and Contrast. Professor? Hey, Sophia. When we compare and contrast, we want to take a good long look at what's the same and what's different between two things. Both of this week's characters are girls from folk tales. Both girls seem to have a sweet tooth, and both girls go into the woods. These characters have some big differences, too. Gretel goes into the woods using the buddy system. However, Red enters the woods alone, and while Gretel drops breadcrumbs to mark a route back home, Red talks to a stranger. This one is too close to call. Folks, the lines for voting open right after the show. We'll find out who has been evicted in a live results show later this week. Before you call in to vote, remember to compare and contrast both characters by asking yourself what's the same and what's different. So that's a good example of how we can compare two fiction stories. And in this case, they, comp they compared two of the main characters, um, Gretel and Little Red Riding Hood. And so it was kind of just fun to figure out ways that, they, ways that they're the same and ways that they're different. But we can do this in nonfiction too. So I want to show you a short video about that and then I'm going to talk to you about today's assignment. We've got a nonfiction throwdown tonight as the authors of two articles on the very same topic face eviction from The Story House. Join us on reality TV's only show filled with your favorite writers and characters. Welcome everyone to another edition of The Story House. I'm your host, Sofia Romero. We've seen a lot of fictional characters and writers on The Story House, but tonight we're all about nonfiction. Two authors are facing possible eviction from the house. Both authors want to help you get better grades on your tests. Lynn Reddy wrote the article, Ace That Exam, a guide to improving your performance on tests. She's up against Tipper Timerson, author of Terrific Test-Taking Tips. Evicted? Me? Whatever could I have done? Look, before you vote, be sure to eat a well-balanced meal. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. 
There's just one tip I need to give people who are calling in to vote. The answer is vote her off, not me. That's it. Plain and simple. Easiest test there is. Okay, let's bring in the professor to break down this matchup in a segment we call Compare and Contrast. Professor, how should voters choose between two writers whose work is about the very same topic? That's a great question, Sophia. We're really going to look closely to compare and contrast these two articles. We know what's the same about these two articles, the topic of test taking. They both share the same goal of improving your test scores. But when we ask what's different about them, we see some really big differences. Each article makes a very different point. Reddy helps students prepare for an exam. She gives health tips and overall focuses on the student. Timerson takes a different approach. She provides question-answer strategies and, overall, focuses on the test. Wow! So even though they're about the same topic, each makes a very different point. That's right, Sophia. Well, there you have it, folks. Two articles on the same topic, but with a very different approach. And as always on the Story House, you decide who gets to stay and who is heading home. Voting lines open up just after this. So hopefully that helps you see how we can compare and contrast even nonfiction articles. These were actually self-help articles telling you how to get ready for a test. And they had the same topic and the same goal, but they definitely had, they came from it from different directions, came to it from different directions. Sorry, talking is hard today. Today, you are gonna complete this activity called the Compare and Contrast Practice. I'm gonna give you two stories, and as you read the two stories, you need to think about how they're alike, compare them, and think about how they're different, contrast them. So your first story, they're super short, just paragraphs. The first one is the donkey and the mule, and the second one is the peddler's mule. Already you can find a way to compare them. Um, I'm giving you some details as you're questions today. Some of the details below are true in just one of the stories, and some of them are true in both stories, and some of the details aren't true in either one of the stories. You're going to read these details and decide, okay, well, a peddler goes on a trip. Was that true in the donkey and the mule? Was it true in the peddler's mule? Or was it true in both? Or is it was true in neither one of them? You're only going to choose one answer, okay? You've got about eight of those, and if you are confused, come back up here and find the answer in the text. What a novel idea. I promise it will help. Um, these are not meant to be tricky. They are meant to make sure that you've paid attention to both stories and that you have the ability to tell me what's the same about both and what's different about both. If you get stuck, I'm right here, and I'm happy to help you. Just shoot me an email, and I will help you as quickly as I possibly can. All right, go show me what you know about comparing and contrasting. <laughs> 